Okay, so welcome to our study abroad podcast series. So today we are recording our hundredth episode. So we have Snigdha who is from Jamshedpur and now at Tetter. So welcome Snigdha to our podcast. Hey, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm from Jamshedpur, as you said. I love Jamshedpur. I hope like if audience is from Jamshedpur, you're watching this. Hi, I made it. <laughs> Sure, sure. I'm also happy that you know, yeah, I'm doing it with a like my hometown mate kind of person. <laughs> sure. So, Snigda, uh, regarding your uh, this uh, study abroad uh, application journey, let's uh, talk a bit about your hometown first. So, which what's your hometown? You already said Jamshedpur. So, tell us a bit about Jamshedpur. What is it famous for? What do you learn about Jamshedpur? How do you explain Jamshedpur to any stranger, etc. So. Whenever I talk about Jamshedpur, the first thing I talk about is Tata Steel. I think personally, I'm so attached to Jamshedpur is because like my granddad, then my dad, we all worked for Tata Steel. So everyone is from Tata Steel. I have grown up in the city where like I was provided with all the facilities. I used to go to Jadi. I remember as a kid, summer camp. Then I did basically all of the stuff which a Jamshedpur person does, like. Uh, Link of Carnivals, then Rhapsody, Yozera. This, these were like my inter-school events. These were the events I would live for. Uh, apart from that, you guys must know the place Kalash. You guys must know like all of the hangouts, school hangouts. So yeah, that's the place I'm from. That's the place that built me today. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, I also see that on your LinkedIn profile, you have done a couple of internships during your school days. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, the internships that you found and how you found them and why did you do that internship during your teenage? What made you do those internships? So a very good advice I would first say was when I was like in my process of finding these internships, I went to like this NGO, KSCSE, and the uh, owner, she like the one who, who who's Kushbu Singh, the, she told me, um, you know, don't do it for because you want to put it in your CV. Do it because you love doing something. So that was my mindset. So I never like counted my internships, how, much, how many internships I did. I was just like, oh, I'm free right now. I can do an internship. So I did an internship. So no. in internship, it was quite hard for me to like find internships, honestly, because I don't think like a lot of people think about it in that way. They don't like plan on like doing internships that much and there was not quite enough opportunities so I used to approach to like uh, specific uh, pages like uh, you must know people for change in Jamshedpur I've worked for them uh, I have worked for Chhadkand LGBTQA they, I've handled their social media I was interested in social media for a very long time so uh, there's a lot of social media in my resume right now I'm working for Tetter as a social media intern so yeah pretty much it sure sure so when was the very first uh, internship that happened in your life like what age which class you thought that okay this is the time i should do something roughly i think it yeah it was after my 10th standard boards it it was for a very local ngo it was uh, i used to just go there and they used to make me no work they used to like not give me any work they used to just tell me to sit and learn and like very small petty things they would like make me work and I would like oh my god I want to work and why are they not letting me work and they're like now I understand that I was just a kid and they would like <laughs> just want me to like see and learn things it helped me in some way yeah yeah sure sure and I think all these uh, internships uh, as a teenage uh, would have helped you in your study abroad application as well right yeah so at first I was doing it for the applications only but then I realized you know, when, when you actually go do these internships, talk to these people, you would start like loving the process of it. So if anyone is watching this right now, don't do it because you want, you want that it looks good in your CV. Do it because when you do it, you will love it. When you talk to people, I, you, you might not do something productive. You guys are just talking, but you guys are making bonds. You guys are making memories. And that that's what helps you grow. That that That's what will make you fall in love with the process. And it's all about that. If you don't love what you're doing, then don't do it. Sure, sure, sure. 
so after doing all these internships and you passed your 12th standard and things like that and then you thought that probably you know i should uh, go for the college and study abroad options or probably yeah. some options in india so what colleges were in your mind that time oh i applied to the 20 co- colleges in the common app then okay so there's this one thing which our parents told me that if you get scholarship then only we are allowing you to go out so so uh, i always wanted to go abroad like you already can see that in my cv so uh, i also like by the way i also was a part of t2c program like dextry t2 college which also helped like which was a career development program it also helped me in some way so i'm going to mention them so uh, yeah my parents always told me to like look for scholarship so my major goal was if i if i get into college i need to look for a scholarship i also got into i also did my ucas so i got into ucl i also got into queen mary kings but i couldn't go there because i couldn't afford it <laughs> so yeah my major like purpose was to like look for scholarship first so so when you applied to so many colleges and you got so many admits how did you pin down to tetter uh, first of all it all came down to the cost which was scholarship secondly uh, when i first saw tetter when i first saw the nas daily video i knew if i get into this i'm going to leave any college like this is my dream college if i get into this i don't want any other college it was always that plus i wasn't even expe- expecting to like get in because honestly it's better 90000 applicants and they select only like 120 so i was like no no way i'm getting in and i already told my dad you know i applied but i'm not getting in and then i got in <laughs> so i'm here was there any application fee for this application oh no no application fees and what was the steps like in the whole application process uh, what were the things you had to submit any test you had to write uh, what all documents you needed to submit so at first like we had to like uh, write our sops there were like three questions and uh, it was about your experience they also asked a lot of data like school marks and things like that after that we had the test the tet trial uh, which basically i did not even understand what it was but it was like a game it was a bit confusing not going to lie but after that we got an invite for interview so that's how it goes and how did your interview happen like what questions were asked how the what was your response like some sample questions maybe so she basically uh, picked up things from my resume and asked me about that and apart from that she asked me about my personal opinions i i was honest but they got me i was I thought I wouldn't get in because I was so like brutally honest. I gave my very underrated opinion, and uh, I don't. I at first I thought that she did not agree with me, and she did not agree with me. But still, like, I think she liked something about me, which made me come here. Sure, sure. So after your interview, then there was like a letter sent, like a final letter of scholarship or something, to join Tetter. uh after my interview there was this another uh, video link sent to me uh, saying that you have to join with the parents and i was like very nervous why why are they sending me that and when i joined the meeting they basically break the news to me that you have got in and yeah so was the founder on the other side of this family meeting <laughs> yeah uh, there was i i think pratham uh, there was no pratham in it but we had like another meeting with pratham my uh, there was this personal meeting one on one with pratham mittal but it was after this meeting this meeting consisted of of the student head and the founder of ubi yeah okay okay sure and once you got the offer uh, you got probably some scholarship also uh, along with the offer yeah i got a good amount of scholarship that's what i can say because we are not allowed to like tell our scholarships sure sure yeah. sure and once you got this uh, scholarship adjusted uh, fee letter etc and you had to probably deposit like uh, some amount initially and that's how i think most admissions happen so what was yeah. the timeline like for all this uh, application process from the date you first applied to the date you had your joining letter and 
your fees deposited etc oh so i think i started uh, my application process in august and uh, after like 2 to 3 weeks like yeah after like 2 to 3 weeks i was uh, i got the news and we got like 2 to 3 weeks after that to like you know accept or reject the acceptance sure. so yeah and then you had to apply for some visa uh, and things like that oh that's what something which our university did it for ourselves like uh, yeah so every visa accommodation and everything was done by my university okay okay so you just had to pay the scholarship adjusted fee and then they took care of your accommodation and your visa and what about your flight uh flight was uh, so what about something about tether we get our intern flight tickets actually from them but uh, to reach to like dubai which was our first term i had to like pay from my side okay okay and which airline did you take to come to dubai <laughs> air india air india <laughs> yeah. and uh, did you travel alone or somebody else traveled with you Oh, I travel alone. Also, by the way, guys, this was I consider this my first international flight because before this, I have just been to Nepal. I have never been to any other like country, and Nepal, you basically don't need passport for Nepal as well. So, uh, it was a very big deal for me. Even like the flight, even anything here, which I'm doing right now, is a big deal for me because my parents never wanted me here. Trust me, I I fought for this. So yeah. and uh, what was your fighting journey like oh it was a roller coaster ride let me tell you that because the for the like till like the 11th hour my parents kept telling me that you know go go abroad in like the masters go go there for the masters even like my no there was this best friend like my neighbor her mom came up to me and she was like i know that you're planning to go abroad but trust me don't go now it's going to be hectic and anyone who tells you that anyone who tells you that do not dream big don't go don't go after 12 it's going to be very hectic let me tell you i'm having the best life right now i i i'm literally so happy they say that you know you are you, you have to do your own laundry you have to do your own cooking you you might not be able to manage it i am managing it so well it takes me 15 minutes to cook so anyone who tells you that don't listen to them don't give up on your dreams Sure, sure, sure. I think uh, see, everyone is you know has their own biases and their way yeah. of explaining things. So it's not that they don't want your progress. It's more like you know everyone is a bit scared also that how will this yeah they are just scared manage all yeah. this. Yeah. So it's I uh, think nothing uh, on the evil side <laughs> as such. Yeah, yeah. The reason why um, I also made it because I was so rebellious. I would like not listen to anyone who would like. say and you have to be a bit of rebellious like there might be a lot of people who are like worried about you and that's good they are they, they also love you no disrespect to them but for something which you know that you know you want to do you have to have the fighting spirit for it so correct yeah. correct it's also this convincing skill and i think at tetter probably you are going to do this convincing a lot because building businesses every semester <laughs> You know, uh, will require a lot of convincing <laughs> here and there. A lot of people still. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, sure. So you took this Air India flight and you landed in Dubai. And once you landed in Dubai, this was your very first international trip. How did you feel at the mm. airport, and how did you reach your accommodation? Oh, uh, actually, it wasn't hitting me that I'm finally here. Like, I uh, first time I come to like Dubai airport. I see all her babies, and I see all the Arab women, and they are dressed so well. Like it's not like India; it's it's a bit different. So uh, all these like chamak thamak we say, it was so much for me, and I I I just was like happy to my core after a very long time because you give your board exams, you have that depressing episode. Before that, there's freeze. Before that, there's third term exams, and it was so hectic, and I. The minute I landed in the airport, I know this is all worth it because everything, every thing which happened to me in my school, everything which I had to like struggle for, is all like solved right now. I get my reward, so it was that happiness with me. So, 
did you did you maybe make made any mistake in this over excitement like leave your luggage this that misplaced or something <laughs> or nothing like that happened no no nothing like because you're alone right so you always have that feeling you're just extra conscious sure sure so were your parents a bit scared when you were traveling alone uh, to dubai or uh, they were okay at that time uh actually before that like before me coming to dubai i i was a presiding officer in for iman iman is like india's international movement to unite nations it's basically mun so for that like uh, i have attended like more than 10 to 15 conferences in like india around different cities so they my parents always have to leave me for that so i always have to convince them to like let me travel alone for it so i travel in alone like in like trains and like a lot of unsafe places so they just had to believe that yeah dubai is the safest country in the world so what's was going to happen so they just were they were very chill about it sure sure so because of your past experiences of travel and, and all this uh, activities this that they had enough confidence that this is like you know an easy cake for you to travel this to. is the least thing she yeah she she's going to be afraid of or something like that and you took the flight from kolkata yeah okay and how long was your flight did you keep a track or something mm, i think 3 hours i guess okay, i don't remember sure. and once you landed in dubai and you went to your accommodation uh, you had other people also at the accommodation or you were like one of the first few or last few who was the oh so i was like uh, i didn't i didn't take the flight to kolkata to dubai directly i went to kolkata to delhi and then because i went to delhi and there was my friend already that uh student the other data student so i went with him to dubai so it was quite chill so yeah Oh, okay okay so you had uh, like one more person that accompanied you from delhi right so that was yeah. good thing. okay okay and once you came to the dubai so you came directly to your accommodation or you had to stay somewhere else for some days and then you booked no no i came uh, directly to the accommodation and also like i came on the second day so it was fun there were already that our students all around and we already knew them because we had the thing called zero term where we were uh, we had like a lot of master classes a lot of activities a lot of events and a lot of competitions as well so we already knew each other like all the tetra tribe was already like familiar okay okay and these were all happening mostly online is it yeah it was all online but uh, if you win something you get like tetra goodies dropped to your home so that happened with me Yeah, 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 for sure. That's good. That's good. And once you came to your accommodation, the cooking, cleaning, laundry, etc. Are you doing all of it? Is there any like a plan or partially full? Oh. What's the breakup like? So I take a uh, one meal plan a day, which is my dinner. For uh, I think I don't take lunch because I'm here all the time. So yeah, and breakfast I don't eat. Trust me, guys. <laughs> I should like I should start eating with it. I just don't eat breakfast. It's just so unhealthy. Don't do this, guys. It's that you know, two egg roti story. <laughs> you eat two times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, this, apart from this cooking, cleaning, and uh, laundry, etc. Uh, what about the part-time job or internship that you can do now? So, as I mentioned, uh, I'm actually. Uh, doing an internship social media and don't support that or handling their pages but i am looking for a very paid internship a lot of uh, that uh, students they are already getting paid and uh, somebody got a job at blue smart recently so there's a lot of opportunities here uh, so i have applied to a couple of internships that's what my plan is to like work for a paid internship right now so and this is my social media internship that you are doing is uh, like uh, taking care of their their instagram page linkedin page etc or how is it and uh, it it is a bit of like that but then we also like have to like write content we also have to like uh, uh, manage your timings if by chance there's an interview coming up if there's like yeah it's a it's a load of things it's not just like what you see in the page So, so and what's like the time commitment every day for this it's it's 
uh, actually very flexible. Sometimes you can work for two hours. Sometimes you can do not work. Okay, okay. But in your case, like you are putting like one to two hours every day on an average, like five ten hours a week, kind of. Thing. Yeah, one to two hours every day on an average. Okay, okay, okay. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, after this part time job and things like that, and once you actually have your classes uh, finishing, and then you go back uh, to your hostel. Uh, are you also exploring the Dubai city a bit, or have you explored Dubai a bit? And thanks to my school, they actually took us to Museum of Future, and they keep on like taking us to a lot of places. We went to the Arab Expo, then we had Jitex. It's like world's biggest trade fairs. So there's a couple of things to explore in Dubai. I, I do it personally as well. I went to Jumeirah Beach and. Yeah, I'm going to all the way today. Uh, so yeah, so I am exploring Dubai a lot. Your accommodation is uh, like within Dubai, or it's a bit outskirt of Dubai. Mm, it's in the academic city. It's where like a, a lot of universities are, like headed for, and universities are there. So okay, okay. So this is the place where you have your accommodation, where that uh, knowledge city, yeah. academic city, is there, and then your classes happen where. Uh, it's in the world. It's in the World Trade Center, so it's in the central Dubai. So we have to travel like one and a half hours to come from our accommodation to here. One and a half hours, one way, or both ways. One way. Okay, okay. It's like almost three hours of travel every day. Then. Yeah, it's hectic. Trust me. We actually, you know, we do not sleep. I last night I was also like I told you in my uh, in there as well. And I don't sleep, so the best place to sleep is where everyone is getting adapted to sleep on the bus. So we sleep while we are here. So that's what we are trying to, you know, do. We just like complete our sleep in there. So. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. So you are managing all your sleep time in the bus time so that uh, you can be awake at the rest of the time yeah. to finish all the work, etc. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so in Tether, I think the concept goes like uh, every semester you are building a business. So this semester also you are building a business. So what's your business like? Uh, could you throw some light on your business? Oh, I would love to. This, this is where I would start talking. So my business was, uh, uh, so in dropshipping, we are supposed to like pick a very impulsive buys, uh, something like a person would buy very instantly. But what my business is, it's a bit of niche market. It comes I'm targeting Indian expats in like different countries for the you know, festive products. So we are selling like right now Diwali is coming. So we are selling Diwali products. Uh, after that, uh, we're also targeting Halloween customers. We're targeting like things which are like very hard to find in foreign countries for Indians. So that's what my business is all about. And then how will you get all this? So somebody will courier it from India or they will courier direct to the customers place oh so uh, it's not uh, exactly like not the whole, all of the wholesalers are from india uh, actually it's from china okay okay so instead of going from china to india it's coming directly to let's say dubai and neighborhood <laughs> yeah it's basically the us market we are targeting right now oh you're targeting us market only us market uh, no other country we are starting from the US market. After that, we might like expand the market. Okay, okay. So for the audience sake, could you explain drop shipping to everyone? What is a drop shipping in a very layman explanation? So drop selling is basically like connecting the wholesaler to a buyer. And it also includes, it, it is not just like, you know, selling a product. It also includes your branding, what you do to a product, how you present the product to the marketing to the market so yeah there's a lot of things that involves so that's what we are learning sure sure and like are you launching a website or something so that people can buy or are you just putting it on some marketplace or both oh we have already launched our website the we have already got our emirates id the business is legal and we have like we have even made sales so yeah it's already going What's your website name? Maybe some of the audience might want to check out. It's uh, called the Desi Dhamaka. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. I'll put this uh, website link in the description. <laughs> then 
great yeah great. if you if you put like search in in the instagram it shows like dc dhamaka shop it will show the page will so show. you made a instagram page you made a website and you made a any other social media page like linkedin page or something tiktok tiktok we made tiktok facebook TikTok. yeah all the social media pretty much okay okay sure sure tiktok is not then... banned you guys <laughs> yeah 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 tiktok you can sell uh, elsewhere right <laughs> yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you might have forgotten how to use TikTok because it's banned in India. <laughs> oh, trust me, I have to like restart like everything again. Hectic. I'm also the, like, by the way, guys, I'm also doing marketing for my uh, drop shipping team. So here also, I'm doing marketing. I think I'm built for this. The other day, I was like uh, in call with my parents, and I was telling them, "See, I'm just doing social media. I just get to do social media. You have like made me." For social media, at this point, I don't get to do anything else. Sure, sure. Uh, you are applying uh, to internships, and then you are also doing this uh, social media marketing for Twitter, and then social media marketing for your drop shipping. So, will you be able to manage all this? Do you have enough time? And then maybe you have some classes, this, that, also, right? Yeah. So, uh, I think it's very manageable. It's not that hard because, like, they let us do whatever we want. If, if some, 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 sometimes. If by chance I'm not able to manage, if I'm having like difficulties, they would understand and they would like let go of some of our workload. So that's very manageable. If we, like, if only we give them, uh, you know, that we are actually working, we are not like wasting time. Then they are okay with it and they like customize our schedule. So it's okay. It's fine. Okay, Snigda. So next question that I have is, uh, what are your future goals from now? So, uh, this is what, what one thing I said in my interview as well. That I do not like have a certain future goal for myself. But one thing I want to do for a short term goal is what I said internships. And I do like look forward in building a very successful business. That's one of my goals. Um, I want to fix my sleep schedule for right now, and I want to eat my breakfast. And apart from that, uh, yeah. The only goal is to like earn money, makes generate income right now. Uh, so my last question to you is, uh, what advice would you give to younger yourself uh, and the people who are study abroad aspirants, people from Jamshedpur in general? Like, what specific yeah. advice would you like to give from your point of view? Some mistakes that you made that they shouldn't. I think uh, one thing which I would like really, really give out is like. Uh, start early. If you do not start early, if you do not plan early, it's gonna be hectic. You cannot, at the end of like the twelfth standard, you cannot be like, oh, I want to study abroad. For me, I had like planned very early. Is the reason why things work worked out for me. So that's one thing. Apart from that, I would say don't do it just because you wanna go somewhere. Do it because you wanna fall in love with the process, fall in love with the route to it. So yeah. Sure, sure. Any recommendation on LinkedIn usage for teenagers? Mm hmm. Exactly. So, LinkedIn is so important for you. You people say that oh, LinkedIn is not important. It's not relevant. That's not true. I think uh, if you want to attract uh, the amount of like the target people you want to work with, you should link. You should do LinkedIn. There's a lot of internships where my LinkedIn link links were asked to asked. And I had to like give out my LinkedIn link, and that was the reason why like the recruiters like you know asked that question. Oh, I saw your LinkedIn post. Tell me about this thing. So it's like very important. Uh, maintain your LinkedIn. Go out, experience, and then post it in LinkedIn. That will help you. It will come back to you. So yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Snigda, for all your insights and experiences and the tips for our juniors. And we hope a uh, lot of people have learned a lot of things from this podcast. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All the Jamshedpur people, people, all the best. I want you to, I want to see you guys be successful. Sure, sure. Take care. Snigda, bye. Bye.